Welcome to another edition of the Not So Intellectual Podcast. I'm here with my beautiful co host once again, Ludicly, aka Lisa Chan. Mm-hmm. AK, aka, what was it? Booty Lee? Booty Lee. Booty Lee. <laughs> okay. So, we are talking about The Weeknd and this song. What's this song called again? This song is called Cause I Love You by Lenny Williams. Start from the beginning again? I mean, if you've heard this song. No, say it from the beginning again so you so, so they you can, can hear, hear them go, yeah. ah, No, the so they can part. hear the, the beginning of the sound. She's saying that this song is very similar to You Earned It by The Weeknd. Well, least... The Weeknd song is very similar to this song. And what I'm trying to tell him is between this song and a song by Denise Williams called Silly. Go ahead and play it's that the one. two songs, like it's a mashup. It's like he did a mashup. And I'm like, it's cool and everything. As an artist, you know, do your thing. But I don't know. I don't like the song. I don't like his song that much because I'm like, I just think about those two songs. It kind of buzz me. Okay, I'm playing YouTube. I don't have. No, I'm that red too. I didn't get that red, so. <laughs> that red YouTube, I red tube was a porn show. Yeah, yeah and then Rick's over here with his red tube business. <laughs> so I ain't got that YouTube red, so. So she's saying that this lady. He's singing like her in this song. Okay. To me, that's how it sounds. And then. It's like the melody of Cause I Love You mm-hmm. by the other guy. It's like, I don't know, there's quite a few songs that come on. I'm like, huh. That song is totally good. Denise Williams. The song is called Silly. And I understand what she's saying. So, you gotta get into the song for it to start sounding more like it. No, I, I couldn't but kind of really hear what you're talking about. The part where he's like, uh, you should pull it up on yeah, the uh, computer uh, so uh, we can like kind of cross reference between the three. Alright, I'm gonna pull it up over here. You know, it's gonna sound loud over here, so you should probably flip it up on your ears. Well, I mean, I already got two people I'm trying to play these songs, so it's gonna like cut it. Just turn it down. Sheesh. It's gonna be loud. Like, you don't have a volume button on your computer. Christ. Speaking of Christ, we saw Jesus Christ at Comic Con and, like every anime convention or comic book convention, people see adults in costumes and apparently we're devil worshippers and hedonists and we're in need of salvation, so. Those was, people were out there. That was and the best Jesus story. shut that shit down. That was awesome. <laughs> so there was a Deadpool guy. Oh yeah, and Deadpool. Deadpool and Jesus. They were standing out there just in front of the crazy fucks, crazy religious fucks. And the crowd that was gathered around them went crazy. And man. It it was it was a sight to see. It was a good sight to see. Good times. These people can be quite annoying. Like, I grew up in the church, or at least going to church, and I'm not down with, I'm not down with the whole, I'm gonna shove my Christian in your face until you are like me. It's not cool. That picture of him is so funny. But yeah, that's like, um, what is it? Uh, Rubo. Oh. What's happening? I don't know. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell's you what earned is it? That? Yeah, it's that one song you earned it by the weekend. Hold I up. swear I'm turning into an old person. Like I, I I liked I liked it at first, but I didn't like the I don't like the direction it's gone in. But like trap music was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I like this, Mm -hmm. cause it was like, crunk was my shit. All right, so here's the song. Here's the song. Okay. Hopefully, we'll play without any. Remember the first song that we showed you guys? It sound. It began 
a little similar to this. I know. Music today is all, well, most music's been sampled because there's so much, you know, there's plenty out there that's like, oh, you know, sample. Like Kanye's album is just all samples. That's probably why he went broke. But, like, this shit is just samples on samples on samples on samples. Racks on racks on racks, right, yeah. <laughs> but isn't it, I mean, you can argue. You can argue that music nowadays that's what i'm saying like, like a lot of it is but like, even like the, whoa, 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 the the new stuff that's going on it's not necessarily new but it's something that caught, caught on the, uh, the electric dance music electronic EDM. EDM. they yeah. sample a lot yeah, of old samples stuff. of stuff that's been remixed and everything i'm not criticizing mm-hmm. it i'm just saying like but that's, I have a there's so that much that's, that's been done way to make music well i mean there's so much that's been done it's really hard to come up with something that doesn't already sound like something that happened yeah so it's easier to just kind of go through the catalog and pick out your inspirations it's the same thing in fashion you know you're mm-hmm. not coming up with nothing new don't even think that but the idea is how noticeable is it how many years has it been since people like how fresh is the sa- the music that you're sampling to the consciousness like, is this intentional? Like, when you purposely sample something that already happened and everybody remembers it, mm-hmm. it was for nostalgic purposes, it's cool and everything, but when, it's just, I don't like it when I feel like somebody's putting some stuff in my face and like, look, this is new, mm. and it sounds like some shit I grew up listening to. And it's just like, I'm 30, I'm almost 32 years old, I'm not that old, it's not like I'm some 60-year-old person saying, I grew up listening to this music, it's not new. But it's like, it's from a generation and a half, let's say, ahead of my time. Mm -hmm. Those songs. Mm -hmm. They're at least one generation ahead of me. And to me, you have an artist that's the same age as me coming out with a song that's not even a whole two generations ahead of us saying, and it's not, there's no like... There's nothing behind it to say, like, hey, we, this was an homage to, or I was inspired by. Mm-hmm. It's And then it's like the, the market that this music is made to appeal to has no concept of that music. I wonder if he's ever the most said part. anything about that, though. So I'd be interested to hear him talk about it. Yeah. I would be interested to hear him talk about it. But at the same time, I'm like, I mean, it's just that thing of, like, it wasn't, like, for me... In my head, a lot of the pop music, in general, pop music is not made for 35-year-olds. Mm. So, The Weeknd has some good music. It's got some music that's not my cup of tea, but it's just like the, the target consumer is somebody who's like anywhere from mid-teens to mid-20s. Mm. That's the target consumer for this music. They're not familiar with this song by Denise Williams or by other dude that I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're not by they don't listen to that stuff and the people who do listen to that stuff, you know, they hear it but they're not really hearing it like that. And then because the audiences for like when I was growing up, there weren't that many black artists with a blended audience like you have now. So like because the audience is more blended, you're not gonna have as much of a background in that audience of who this song is made by or how much, you know, the catalog of soul music that these consumers are hearing is lower because Mm -hmm. their background is blended. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just saying, like, they don't know those songs. So it's presented in a way, it's presented like, hey, it's new, and people are loving it. It's not a bad song. I don't like it that much. But it's that thing of like, oh, this is just those two songs put together. Now, if I went to somebody who was 21 or 22, Mm. and say, yo, that song is these two songs put together. It's like this weird refusal to hear it. Mm. Like, when Rude Boy came out by Rihanna, I was like, oh, that totally sounds like Beyonce singing in the background. Mm. I wonder if that song was originally hers, recorded by her, and then 
Rihanna kind of like re-recorded it over it mm -hmm. and it kept her background vocals. It's possible it was Solange too because they sing alike. And I'm like, because I've listened to so much Beyonce music mm -hmm. just from my own behavior and like my friends. I have a friend who was like, uh, Beyonce, like she would have been part of the Beehive mm -hmm. if she was younger. So yeah, it's like I've heard her voice enough for me to be like, oh, that sounds like this person mm -hmm. now might be might not be true i tried to look that shit up mm -hmm. that type of information is not exactly just like available to whoever wants to google it so i mean it, i would be interested to find out that stuff mm -hmm. but it's just like i don't know i've always kind of had an ear for like oh that voice sounds familiar like i do not remember what it was but it was like this background music and i'm like oh that sounds like such and such. Yeah. That sounds like that person. And I look at him like, oh my god, it is. Mm -hmm. I was right. But, you know, I don't know. It's just that thing where I'm like, I guess because I grew up, like my, my thing, like I used to do was just sit in my room. Mm -hmm. Like I used to get grounded a lot. Or I would be in a situation where I was a latchkey kid. So I would just be in the house all the time watching TV mm -hmm. or listening to music. And it's just like, we didn't have cable most of the times. And even then when we did, it was like, if you're in the house in the middle of the day in the summertime, ain't shit on TV. <laughs> so it's like, once you get tired of Nickelodeon, it's pretty much a wrap. So I would just sit in my room and draw mm -hmm. and listen to music. So I'm like, I have an ear for a lot of stuff that I feel like people wouldn't really be listening for. Because you listen to a song 25 times, <laughs> you you know, it starts to kind of... You couldn't possibly be listening to it for the same reason every time. Mm. So it was like I got interested in that type of stuff, but it never really went further than just like me thinking like I might be a singer. I don't sing that good. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I used to be OK. I think if I did lessons, I get better like anything. Yeah. But it's not really my thing. But like the I the production part is more interesting to me and like how beats get made, how mm -hmm. lyrics are written, why, you know, like, when I liked poetry, yeah. So just, like, that type of stuff was cool to me. I remember when I was getting my tattoo, once um, I was watching the Off the Wall documentary. Oh, yeah. And uh, what's his name? Uh, the Weeknd was in there. Oh, really? And he was talking about how he discovered his voice, and he was saying that he was listening to him, and mm -hmm. he tried it. And he was surprised that he was able to sing like him. Mm. And that's what started the whole thing. Yeah, and he does sound um, a lot like Michael Jackson. But it and wasn't... It was funny because you thought that's why I was like, mm, I'm not feeling this. No, um, <laughs> I was remembering um, one time we were talking about The weekend again. And you were saying, I was wishing uh, Michael, Jackson, Michael Jackson was still alive so that he could try doing trap music. And I was laughing my ass off, and then you made the comment saying, "Oh, he's there's already one like that. Just listen to the weekend." Yeah. And then I lost my shit because it's true. This yeah. guy, it, it, it's basically like if um, if Michael if Jackson, Michael Jackson started singing music started singing like trap this. music, yeah. And not just trap, but like in general, if he was doing music right now, and I mean, like I'm not, oh. like I respect them as artists for yeah. the most part, and I'm glad there's somebody I who mean, actually. Yeah is good at sounding like him is doing it instead of like who was it was it was usher but there was somebody else who was like i'm gonna try to be like michael jackson i mean chris brown used to try to dance like him but his big ass there's been many of them michael oh justin timberlake that's the other there one because he fucking did the song with him uh all right what is it mm -hmm. uh it's the repetitive ass song it's not terrible which one? Baby, love never felt so fine. Uh, he did a song with Michael Jackson. Baby. That's the one you're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love never felt so... It's yeah. not a bad song, but it's like very clear that it was recorded probably during no, off-the-wall time. Yeah. Or like right before Thriller. No, was it Thriller? No, is, it was... Um, is, um, is the song Human Nature on the Thriller album? I don't know. 
Um, I don't remember right now. I know some. If somebody listens to this later, they're like, "Yes, you fucking yes. idiot! God, so, you call yourself a Michael Jackson fan." When we were talking about the Michael Jackson writing trap music, I came. I stumbled stumbled upon Michael Trapson. Oh yeah, this was. It's funny, but it's not really like that good. <laughs> it's like. I'm, I'm gonna let you guys hear it real quick. So I believe that there's been this a. This is like the low. This is like the. Hold this on. is like the novice version of this. I f- of yeah, the there's genre. there it is. Okay, I found the actual music video. I'll link the music video at the, in the description so you guys can see it. It's pretty is this ridiculous. A is this nope. Garbage? This is the, the beginning, beginning of, of the video. Well, some looks like a white lady with an afro wig on. Maybe she just really light skin. She's like doing a pregnancy test she looks half asian i don't know it just looks stupid as fuck she's her pregnancy test is glowing God, this is such a dumbass video like <laughs> let me put it back over here Oh, so she's, she's supposed to be Billie Jean. Yeah, apparently. So there's Michael Trapson looking at some Prince trap trap prints on the on his uh computer. Okay, here's sir. That was that was pretty ridiculous. Essentially, that's, come cross that's... town from fucking forest lawn and beat her ass for listening to this bullshit. This is garbage. Like it, it was funny on Facebook, but like this guy's trying to make a career out of this shit. I don't like it. <laughs> so uh, I'm hating. Let's continue this trend of listening to music. I'm officially a hater. This is a music pod, the music episode of the Not So Intellectual Podcast. Um, I. Got on the kick on the Childish Gambino kick for a while. Still I am. Okay. And he's good. pretty good. He's pretty good. And um, I stumbled upon a cover that he did of Tamiya's um, So Into You. Was it a cover or did he just sample this song? No, he covered it. Yeah. He covered it. And this was um, Can I tell live. You, honestly, I've heard this song so many fucking times that I just can't. And... You know, gonna so have to it's like he it. he didn't grow up listening to the same radio stations as I oh, did. Oh, yes, I did. I have sisters. Yeah, your sisters did. They but love like, that stuff. Not as much mm. because you had your time to listen to your stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I listened to those stations too. But the thing is, I'm like, that song was all right. But well, they had the regular one. Mm-hmm. And then they went and just added Fabulous, there you the go. rapper Fabulous, to the song like randomly. That was and then my they shit. Re- and then they re-released the fucking song. And then they so we went through like six to nine months <laughs> of the song on the radio constantly, right? Mm. And then Fabulous does a remix with her, and then we do another six to nine fucking months of the song, and then. The Quiet Storm, the late night radio station. Everybody knows what it is, even if you never heard 
the radio segment Quiet Storm. Most R and B stations have a version. Where yes. They play this we late do. night slow music. Guess what fucking songs on there? Fucking I'm so into you. Not with Fabulous because they don't play rap on there, but it was still there. So it's like it came. So it was like never gone. And now here I am, after not hearing a song for like, forever. <laughs> And like kind of relieved about it. Now my boyfriend <laughs> has been listening to her song and Childish Gambino's version. Because I heard that you playing it the other oh, yeah. day. Oh yeah, I've always played this shit. It's good. It's a good cover. He was cover. working on his cosplay and I'm like, oh, that's the fucking song. So you're going to have to endure it one more time. Not the whole thing. I'm just going to no, play no, a little I get bit. It, I get it. Just so they can, they can hear it and, no. and appreciate this this really good cover. He did a really good job. I like the way the, how they composed it too. He needs to uh, do a cover if you put him in. So yeah, you can find this on uh, Like a Version is a segment on Australian radio station Triple J. Triple J is um, on YouTube. You can find this on YouTube as well. So yeah. Uh, also, I guess we could talk about this one too. Um, I'm not sure if you guys seen this or not, but it's a uh, Donald Glover and Reggie Watts just yeah, that's why freestyle. Huh? It was on, well, on the show. Uh, yes, I do. Thanks for it, was on, it was on James um, Corbin. Late, late show uh, with James Corbin. And so I'm like, most Glover. people in America have seen it. It's a very cool question for you. Um, somehow I watch it. It's funny. Do they show Reggie Watch Coke now on the show? Yeah, so I have a question. yeah they uh, do. Have you ever considered, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he actually does Coke for real. He's just one of those people with it. With it. Just because it looks cool. Uh, but it's really funny that people, I'm sure there are people who watch the show. Alright, this or is when they start to use. actually freestyle, compose a song out of nowhere. That's awesome. Can never just let people sing. Look at the song, man. They're clapping. Right. So you guys can go ahead and finish that up on your on your own time. I'll go ahead and put it in the description so you guys Speaking can enjoy it as well. Being a part of an audience. Mm -hmm. When I went to go see MC Chris, MC Lars, and Mega Ram. We're all performing, and every act, all three of them did the same thing, where they wanted everybody to put one hand in the air, bob it up and down, and it just felt like one of those things where it's just like, oh, we're rappers, we have to do this, and it was just like really ingenuine, ingenuine, and like it felt so empty, and I looked around every time it happened, and people just had like this dead look on their face. <laughs> And it was just like, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you watch the person set before <laughs> to see how they work the crowd so you can know, like, oh, let me not do that. It was like, I had fun with my friends, but there was, like, this weird energy toward, you know, when MC Chris came on where he just seemed really, like, it, you know how you get birthday party balloons filled with helium? And then yeah. you let them hang there 24 hours later and they're like they're half, flat. half bobbled down. Yeah. They're like, 
if it was touching the ceiling last night during the party, the next morning they're like near the chair backs, just kind of hanging there. Hanging That's there. how he was. He seemed kind of like moody. And we're like, what the fuck? I paid you... money to see you, dude. Where's your energy? All Sing right, a song, guys. motherfucker. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh huh. And then mm. he t- and then he did some stand up, but the stand up was like. Some jokes that I I'm a, I I watch a lot of fucking stand up and a lot of comedy shows and a lot of skits when I'm sewing because I need something in the background get tired of listening to music and I like to laugh so it was just like the jokes he was telling I don't even remember them but they were just I was just like mm, I've heard this joke before that's not your joke mm. it couldn't be possibly could not be your joke. Why are you doing this? Sing a song. Like, it was weird, because I was like, ooh, I can't. I was so excited to hear the music from his new album. Mm-hmm. So you would think he would take the opportunity to do the music from his album. So people will buy it. Right. And instead, it was like, I'm going to do a few of my hits, because I'm sure you guys only know me for these songs. And he did the song, I Want Candy. Well, but, you know, it's cha- it changed a little bit because probably because of, like, Adult Swim and their copyright shit. So it changed because there was a time where he couldn't perform it legally. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Like, we went to go see him when we were still back in Virginia. And um, people were like, do it, I want candy, you know, please. He said, like, can't do it. What? He did. He did do the song I really liked back then. Which was? Um, OMC. It's a good song. I like it. I and on. he's like he's rubbing his ass off. It's a good song. Like the lyrics are cool. It's a little bit like a speedy pace. So it's kind of hard to understand what he's saying until you like listen to it three or four times. But it was really good. But it was just like this weird thing that night Mm -hmm. when we were just like, oh, what's happening? (laughs) What happened, dude? So I really, I really like this song. Yeah, Freddy's Dead is good. I'm going to play a little bit of that. I just want to hear it. But he like started the song, fucked up, and then started it over. Don't want to blare this song. Which was funny, but like... Then he just kind of like forgot the lyrics to his own song, and we're like, Bruh. I can see how that works, but like, practice. <laughs> like, <laughs> you made the song, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I'm not a rapper. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, I really liked it. You know, what was that one that you said? The OMC. OMC, yeah, that's from Master Dungeon Master Ceremonies, the album. There's quite a few. That That's like the one album I had that was like beginning to end of his music that I had. Let me check this and out. That was part of my studio when I was in college. That's part of my studio sewing soundtrack. That's what's up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, this is OMC.
Okay, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, that was my first time actually hearing the song. It's not bad. Yeah, I played Booties for Breakfast for you, right? No. Oh, yeah, that's a Let fun song. That one. Me... It's funny. It's good, too. Like, he he did really good with that song, too. Booties for Breakfast? Yeah. I think I passed it. <laughs> so, people were yelling out songs for him to sing, and my friend, I was like, hey, guys, let's yell out Booties for Breakfast, see if he does it, but... He didn't do it. But, you know. Booties for breakfast. Mm-hmm. It's a good song. All right, let me see. I'm pretty sure. There's some bass and the song is good. <laughs> Alright, it's something I wouldn't mind checking out. Definitely worth hearing, like, in your. It's interesting, though. I have a friend who has a bunch of his albums, but he doesn't have that one. Interesting. Mm. Curious as to why uh, quite a few people haven't who were like, Oh, I love MC Chris, haven't really listened to the album. The one with Bubble Fat. I'm sorry, the one with Bubble Fat? Um, Bubble Fat. <laughs> Bubble Fat, the song. That's Fatty. Yeah, that song. Play it? Yeah. Alright. Fat's Fat. Is um he performed that one? That's one of his like hits. Why you gotta be telling the people my my feet be stinking? It's supposed to be okay for me. Like in the morning, so. Podcast is in the bed, and maybe that should be the the name of the podcast. Bedcast. Bedtime stories. Oh no, there's already one like that. All right, so that's interesting. We just literally talked over the the song. Okay. Well, um, just play it. We'll be quiet. No, 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 no. Let them let them figure it out. I'll mm. I'll go ahead and put this in the that's description. Bet. That's the song. It's worth a, worth a listen to. MC for Chris, sure. just go to his channel and just listen to his different songs. It's good music. It's just, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the LA can be exhausting. Maybe he was just like having his. Mm -hmm. moment people have moments but it is one of those things like as a paying customer when i go see a performer i expect a show even if it's not like you know pyrotechnics and like crazy mm -hmm. visuals just like you know the energy of, like, i'm happy to see you guys thank you and i mean he was like gracious he was totally gracious but he just kind of had a thing going on where he was like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and like, compared to the first time I saw him in concert, it was, you know, seemed different. Granted, it was quite a few years between. So, I've also, um, as of recently, I introduced Lisa to Loveline. Have you heard of Loveline before well, I talked no, about I, it? I've seen Loveline. They had it on TV for a little while, but they didn't play it on a radio where I lived. So out here in LA, there's a staple. There, are, there used to be a staple. A Loveline on the radio has since uh, been canceled um, after a really long run. Uh, there's been multiple guests. Every night it was a different guest. Um, they'd be singers, comedians, and one specific comedian never fails to fucking bring it and man uh his name is david allen greer i'm pretty sure people know who this is um and i'll play a little bit of um the greatest hits for you guys just a little bit i'll go ahead and put it in the description 
come on, phone. I like a girl with a big butt, but fruit in the middle. It's juicy, it's sweet, cause it's fruit and in the middle. How about a little God bless the child? I think that's something that... Uh, God bless the child. I think uh, that's something that Dag could get involved with. You know, when I finally heard um, uh, Lady Day, Billie Holiday singing, I was like, wow, how did she get the blood, sweat, and tears off? <laughs> <laughs> Tessa? Yeah. What's up, baby doll? Tessa, um, that's a beautiful name. <laughs> Thanks. I think. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, it's a beautiful name. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, my question is, I've been with my boyfriend for a year, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and recently went to the doctor, and I'm like one of those people that... Eyes, uh, <laughs> your papa may have beauty eyes, <laughs> but honey, yeah. face the fear, because God bless the child that's got a UTI on her stink hole. So you want to back to him? So yeah, he he always brings it. Um, definitely check their stuff out. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube worth worth watching. Yeah, he goes in there and just. I mean, the show's crazy anyway. Like, it was crazy even when I watched it on TV. It was just like, oh wow, this is like, like I remember distinctly this one girl to call in because. I don't remember how it happened, but her boyfriend came in her eye. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I think everybody's gotten a bodily fluid that wasn't theirs in or near their eye before at some point. So I'm like, yeah, I could imagine the first time this happens. <gasps> Especially blind. if it's semen. You're like, I'm going to go blind. It's... This is it. This they're is the end for my eye. They're burrowing through my eye. Yeah, they're burrowing in. <laughs> so <laughs> all I can see is just wiggly things in my. I can see side. wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it's like four dudes in color shirts dancing. The wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> so so I yeah, it's wiggle. just like I distinctly remember her calling and being like, "Yo, this happened. What do I do?" And they're like, did you wash it out? Like, Adam's like, did you wash the, Did you wash your eye out? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, eh, I can imagine. Like, you get some junk in your eye. Anything in your eye. And it's, like, scary. But yeah. you get semen in your eye. And she was a teenager, so it was even worse. And she's got to go home with this mm -hmm. red eye. Her mom. It's so yeah, always I got the pink mom. eye. How'd you get pink eye? Well, then, well, to well, see, the it. thing is, you get pink eye, you gotta go to the doctor, they think you have conjunctivitis, and then they're gonna give you medication for it. Um, he told her to, I, they always, there's yeah, always Yeah, he told a her to go to the doctor. No, uh, to flush the eye, if that doesn't work, to go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's always gonna tell them at the end, go to the doctor. Like, every person, even with the UTI trick, I don't like going to the doctor. Well, bitch, you got a UTI. <laughs> Fucking go. Yeah, sweetened cranberry juice ain't gonna get rid of your <laughs> UTI, bitch. Go do something about your vagina. <laughs> I really, not to go go on this weird segue, but um, I, re I really want to watch this Doctor Strange movie. I, I want to see it too. It comes I'm out next week. I'm going to get really high. And yes. I'm going to go spit. I'm because gonna, of the I'm going to get a weed cookie. And I'm going to eat that bitch. You're going to eat the whole thing? I'm going to go to the movies. Oh my God. Lisa. Maybe not the whole thing. <laughs> probably half. You're going hard. But huh? I'm going to go hard. <laughs> and I'm going to let the visuals take me to another fucking planet. We're going to go to IPIC theaters. I wish. I wish I was an adult out here in California when The Matrix came out. Because I would have did the same fucking thing. Oh my God. It doesn't quite hold up the same because it's the effects. I know the yeah. movie too well. Yeah. But it would have rocked my face if yeah. I could have been high as the sky. Because um, <laughs> I even though I hate Rotten Tomatoes, they, they at, at least. Man, they pull the shit they, though. They, it's been they ride the mar of... the Marvel dick pretty hard, but apparently this this fucking. Doctor Strange movie has a hundred percent fresh. That's strange got him going crazy. So, I really want to go see this movie. These Marvel movies, when is man. It come out next week. Next week. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm going high too, but I ain't going fucking that high. No. 
I can't handle sometimes. It's weird. Sometimes I can't handle being too high because it's I'm around people. I usually like being by myself if I'm that high. Well, yeah. But or with you. I don't like being like being I mean, that high with you. You don't have to get that high. Like if like I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. Oh, I know. They're they're pretty rich anyway, so yeah. it's hard to eat the whole thing. Like I don't see how people just eat all of it at yeah, once. The fucking Joey Diaz. It, yeah. Well, I mean, he's different. <laughs> He's not a human. He's some other Shout out to being. the man. Joey Diaz. He's something greater than we are. <laughs> he eat that he's stuff. a higher being. He's a higher being. <laughs> he, he's a... Uh, what is it? His vibration is... He's on a whole different... Uh, vibration. Uh, frequency. Level. Frequency. There we go. He's a whole different frequency. Now, I've heard the vibration thing, too. Yeah. Pretty funny. <laughs> no, they're speaking of vibration. So, mm-hmm. there's this dude on, on YouTube, and... Somebody showed it to me, and we used to watch it, and it was, like, more entertainment than anything, but it was just, like, crazy, and the craziest part was we were staying at this place, and the guy next door looked like the dude that was doing the videos, so the first time we saw him for, like, maybe, like, a month, we were, like, checking him every time he walked past the house, and then one day, it got warmer, and he started painting outside, so we would see his face more often, we are like, all right, that's not him. Mm Mm-hmm. But I was like, sold. I was like, that's him, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like being out here in LA. Like, I was fresh out here too. So I was just like, yo, motherfuckers out here are crazy. Mm. This is him, that's him. It's gotta be. <laughs> but the dude, he called himself uh, his, no, he, he was a uh, medium or. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. It's, it's this thing. I uh, forget psychic? the word. Not a psychic. A cyclic? No. A gargilla? What is it? It's like he, he was making, like, he claimed to make telepathic connections with a being in another universe. Brett. And the being's name was Bashar. And I'm okay. like, okay, like Bashir, like from Deep Space No, Like, you know, like hmm. my ass. I'm like, oh, he's lying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's lying ass. <laughs> so... It got interesting because he would talk about weird shit. And this was like rolling up to the end of 2012 when the first time we saw it. So it was just like, you know, all that shit, all the sexy, uh, appealing, crazy stuff is people putting all these ideas in people's heads. And it's just like, it's it's sexy, it's tasty, it's salacious. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's way cooler than boring ass, you know, go to work every day and be around normal ass people so you know everybody got into some crazy shit in in those years yeah a lot of us so yeah it was like okay well this is happening and uh he it was interesting because i was like yo this man changed up his his uh accent changed (laughs) so the being Bashar had an accent. The accent, accent changed. Accent? It was weird. It was like the best way to describe it is if you've ever been to like a um, holiness church, mm-hmm. like a um. So, but you got Baptist. Depending on the Baptist church you go to, they're like blended with uh, what is it called? Episcopalian. So, you have the different segments of. Christianity, but for the most part, Mm -hmm. black churches, it's like Episcopalian and Baptist is like this marriage thing. And some people call themselves a Baptist, but they behave like an Episcopalian. They just don't wear like the clothes or whatever. So it's like all of these different little, little things that people do. It just depends on like your family for real. But, you know, like if you've seen videos of black people in church singing songs and jumping around, screaming hallelujah and speaking in gibberish, shama la 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 ding dong, then yeah, <laughs> you've seen it. That's that's what I'm talking about. So he just sound like the way he sound like the accent that people take on when they claim to be speaking in tongues, but he was speaking English. So he's like rolling R's and like. His rhythm was weird. I mean, you could find it. Like, it's up there. What is it? It's Bashar. Just type that shit in and it'll come up. Ba- B-A-A- B-A-S-H-A-R. 
Zaha, S-H-A-R, yeah. Yeah, just type that in. And uh, go to one, go to one from like four years ago. Don't do four months ago. Do like three years ago. Uh, I don't know. I just know like four years ago. Ten years ago. Oh shit! He got ten year old videos up here. What did what he sound like back then? Fuck is this shit, Lisa? Ten year old YouTube magic. Some that editing. Hold up! Hold up! Daryl Anko is his name. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This motherfucker was doing shows. So he was doing shows where he was charging motherfuckers money, right, to listen to him talk to this being from another planet or from the future. One of the two. He was, like, making telepathic connections with people. And all of his messages were pretty, like, innocuous. Like, if you wanted to follow it, it wasn't going to ruin your life. It wasn't a cult or nothing. Mrs. Jacobs and... It was like... I... Okay, you're spending money for this? It's on YouTube. Like, what you doing? I... Amanda Green. Hold on. People would ask him questions. I relinquished part of my... All right, so... of my question is yeah. is really um how do you balance out you know i have the old baggage so to speak of times when i used to do that what i thought was 100 percent and yes. uh enjoying it but is he having, channeling you know monetary it's like, problems it's almost like a but then you knew you were not really Google, doing it 100 percent. but he's mm. channeling a being because again understand it's all about defining the concept of abundance and how you relate yeah, to the concept of abundance. Are so you familiar with our definition church. of abundance? Okay. I don't think so. Must have abundance. All right. I will share it with you if I may. Okay. Oh, are you paying attention? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> abundance. <laughs> the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Period. <laughs> Did you hear anything in that definition that said anything about money? No. Did you hear anything in that definition that said anything about any particular way in which the abundance had to come? No. The ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. That's abundance. Period. Okay, fucko. Now, it can come in the form of money, <laughs> but we understand so, that on your... So, yeah. So, this is a 10-year-old video, right? And I saw his videos in 2012, and this motherfucker's been talking about abundance forever. Like, that's his message. He just talks about abundance. And, like I said, coming from a Baptist church, coming from church in general, <laughs> like, you know, they're always talking about, you know, we're abundant and we're marching into abundance. We're walking into abundance. We're praying for abundance. We're fasting for abundance. It's all about getting more of some shit that ain't nobody got. Abundance. And as most people know, most black people, especially religious black people, to not be so financially sound. So what a better message to preach to poor people <laughs> yeah. who are oppressed than the hope of a better life. You so they always, abundance. they're always talking about, oh, Jesus gonna get me a Lexus. Like that type of mentality is there, and and oh, to Lord. hear so to hear him say that shit is like okay. So, but it was interesting because it wasn't poor black people hearing this message. It was white people with jobs oh, with enough Lord. money to pay for a seminar. Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta find that song now. <laughs> oh Lord, go buy me a Mercedes Benz. It's true oh, though. My. It's like, oh okay, so yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Your your history, dank memes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All about that dank These memes. dank memes. These dank abundance. These dank abundance. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Bashar communications. Well, you true. buy me. And then there was right. another. There uh -huh. was some. I mean, it's just some goofy shit on here. Hold up, I'm I'm about to give you guys some abundance right now. Hold on. <laughs> 
Um, so Janis Joplin has an awesome song called Mercedes Benz. Was she from originally? Uh, from around there. Yeah, uh, but, all right, so it's not just black churches. It's like just churches where poor people go to church. If you go in on a random Sunday, chances are like you'll hear the gym about abundance. My game, man. Won't you buy me? Hold up. Sorry, guys. And they always talk about getting oh, fancy Lord, cars. Won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? I think I know how My friends all Mercedes. drive Porsches. I must make amens. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh, Lord. Won't you buy Janice me Joplin, a color TV? What a fucking voice. She's part of that group, the Scratchy 27. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's saying uh, she's got a sound and a conviction. I think it's more of her conviction than anything. It's like how white people liked Mary J. Blige back in the day. Because mm-hmm. there were some scratchy voices. Dog. If, oh they had to, if they were just singing like right over. And then speaking of Mary J., Somebody was dressed as Mary J. Blige for Halloween and was dancing like she dances. It was so good. And girlfriend, it's like it worked sometimes, but other times you're like, this song is too slow. Why are you dancing so hard? <laughs> Where did you see that video? Uh, Facebook, I think. On Facebook, damn. We're gonna have to find it. If uh, yeah, if I find it, fa- it's probably on YouTube too. If I find it, uh, I'll go ahead and, and put it on the description for you guys, cause that shit is hilarious. Oh, hold up! I got something to show you. Okay. Man, so uh, I got a lot of attention as Steve Harvey on Sunday. It was awesome. I didn't think it was gonna get that much attention, but man, people were like, "You got mobbed!" I'm like, "Got mobbed!" It was awesome. Um. I'm already thinking about next year. I we plan on going next year again to come uh I'm sorry, LA Comic Con. Um, but not for the three days, maybe for one or two. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Maybe I'll be uh Macho Man Randy there Savage. Was, there was that whole thing of like the lowered quality of panels. Yeah, there was no panels. At least I don't think there was any panels for Friday. And you would think that there they would want to do... There were absolutely no panels on Friday at all. It was just, like, some autographs and shit. Yeah. And it's just, like, I paid money to come here for three days. And one of the three days had no content other than meet some celebrities and pay for autographs. And consume. And I didn't appreciate that shit. Oh, and buy stuff from the dealer's hall. Dealer's Hall was nice, but still, I didn't pay money to come buy shit. I can't. I paid money to come enjoy the content you were going to provide at your convention. And the content was honestly kind of yeah. slim. Yeah, you know, it was there, like, there wasn't as robust. They had, but they yeah. had like PC panels, like uh, lesbian, yeah. not lesbian, uh, what is it, Fis- feminism and In this cosplay. thing. Oh no, there was a, it was like a cross play for like gay people or something like that it was like this weird thing where it was just like that's really fucking specific yeah why is it here not that there's There's anything wrong there's a convention for like nerdy gay Mm -hmm. people i don't know if it's in la but i have heard about it yeah so it was just like if it's this specific shouldn't it be there and not at a convention that had panels that were rejected yeah there were rege- so there were panels that were rejected that probably would have been just as good, but they had a lot of panels that just seemed really like, who is this for? Is this like it seemed like someone who was the person who was um, compiling the entertainment was like I would be interested in this, yeah. so that's gonna stay. I'm not interested in that, so that's gonna go. Cause I'm like there could have been some cooler stuff there. And I'm sure there was some great ideas, but because somebody didn't know somebody or somebody was like a, a hour too late mm-hmm. or they had a one ten words too short in their submission or whatever it was, got next. And instead, this boring ass shit got put up. 
So there goes our chances of ever having a, a booth or a panel. No, <laughs> it isn't. No, because no. I feel like the criticism would be perfect. Um, so I wanted somebody who I understand where you're coming from. Attended. Um, but I understand their position as well. It's being PC is very um popular right now. It's been a big thing this year. So I already knew that shit was gonna happen. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I I, I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to say that it's okay to be yourself here. Well, I mean, even it was, if that yourself, was already that was already the point. If, even if yourself is this, you can also be free to express yourself that way here with everyone else too, if you wanted to. Yeah. And I I like that they're doing that. Oh, wait, personally. I have the booklet, so I can actually yeah. pull out the one that I was like, what so, the fuck is this? Um, but after a while, it's like, all right, this is pretty... Well, I mean, it's like people pay money okay, to come to a convention. I get it. Why are we doing stuff that you could have on Facebook? Like, you want to support a group, we got that shit on Facebook. It's not necessarily a support like group. It's and then like on more top like of a that, meetup type of thing. And well, it's, a, it's like, okay, here's a panel that might be for someone's interest, but like... Saturday, we have a bun feminism, the new F word in geek culture. Really? I mean, I mean, I don't feel like it's a big, it's an issue in some cases, but it's not the feminism part mm. that's the problem in geek culture. It's the thing of people, a lot of nerds don't like their paradigms being broken. Mm. A lot of people who are interested in things that are considered to be under the genre of nerdy are escapists. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that people have to admit. So it's just yeah. like, if you've gone to this thing to escape the world you're around, you get this paradigm that's in your head and that's how it's supposed to be. That's your stability. And this is me playing devil's advocate because I have no problem with flipping that shit around, whatever. Mm. It's make-believe. Like, all of the things you like, somebody came up with that shit in their head and wrote it down. So it's allowed to be changed. Mm -hmm. It's not a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like, Wonder Woman is a woman. And she was originally presented as a white woman. But if they want to make her a black man and make it Wonder Man, mm. it's fake. It doesn't, it's not real. By the way, by the way, DC Comics, I think they do have a Wonder Man. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> but it's not, it's not what you think. Yeah, but it's just that thing. It's like, it's, it it's like the whole, you know, the whole issue, like, it was it Gamergate? And then you had the issue with the Ghostbusters that shouldn't have even been at. It was a big non-issue. Mm. And... You know, it's just like people think because there are people getting upset mm. that it's a problem. And it's like, no, we have a problem in our society with people who don't like certain things being changed. Yeah. And then we have a problem in our society where people would rather see a man doing certain things than a woman. Mm -hmm. Especially if the man did it the first time, the man should do it always. So we have that problem. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it's geek culture. I think it's just human culture that we're all a part of mm -hmm. and because you're a geek you think you've been you're allowed to be excluded from the rest of the world like I, I feel like that there are people who just you know it's just like they had their bubble to escape to they got fucked with because the real world started infiltrating their bubble mm -hmm. and now they want to like create these social justice issues that are not issues in that sphere they're issues in the real world and this is like there are battles to fight in the real world and mm -hmm. there are real things to talk about that you could involve with geek culture but instead you're doing panels at a convention in LA mm -hmm. that happens over the ho over Halloween weekend that millions of people come to and you're gonna put that up there I really wanted to go to the sure who locked what? It was um for Sunday, but we ended up going to the um comedy cosplay. No, that was Saturday. Panel, Sunday. No, we went to the comedy. We didn't go to any panels on That's Sunday. That's right. I'm sorry for for Saturday, and um, I wanted to go to that one, but I knew you probably wouldn't have liked being Which there. Which one was it? The Sherlock, who, Doctor Who, and um, 
uh, supernatural. Goddamn train. So we're gonna go ahead and pause it for a little bit. There's a goddamn train, and it's gonna fuck with. Oh wait. Okay, there it is. So one second. I hear a train coming. It's coming around the bend. I better stop singing the song. Or else I'll lose my monetization. Yeah, you lost Fuck. that shit a long time ago. <laughs> so they had other panels like Voices of Anime. They had a Stranger Things discussion. And I think you were saying that the chick that played Barb was going to be there. Yeah, she was the um, only star there. They had, you know, different stuff that was like, okay, that'll be interesting to other people. Oh, okay, here it is. It was the LGBT cosplayer panel. And they discussed the battle between hypersexuality versus convert conservative conservative conservatism conservatism yeah. <laughs> conservatism I can't say that word right now it's very late whatever being conservative and cosplay coming out in the eye of social media it it just didn't seem like the description didn't seem like it was really about lgbt and it was just like all of these other subjects so it was like the it was like they wanted to do something and they didn't put the right title on i guess Mm -hmm. and the description's all weird but it seemed like they just gave it to them because it was about LGBT and not because it was a fully formulated. So I'd be interested to know how successful that panel was. But it was just like, okay, if this is going on on Saturday, mm-hmm. the busiest day of the convention, why the fuck couldn't there have been panels on Friday? The convention oh started. God. The convention was only four hours long on Friday, but it could have. They could have had it. Yeah. There actually it was longer than four hours. It was it like was, six hours. It was, it like was from s- nine a.m. to four. No, Friday it was not from nine a.m. to four. That was Sunday. Friday was like f- three or four mm-hmm. until ten ish, something like that, or nine p.m. So it went until the evening, but for some reason they had no panels on Saturday on Friday, and I'm like. If you're going to have a panel where the description is all wonky and weird, mm-hmm. and then you got stuff that's just kind of like, yeah, you know, it. I don't get it. Like, it there could have been more panels. Yeah. I don't know. I think also, Better I'm quality. used to going to anime conventions, so like my interest is a little different. Mm-hmm. So my expectations are also different for panels, because I'm like, I'm used to fan run, fan managed panels. So mm. people who do the panels are a little more passionate about what they're doing. And we also skipped the main stage panels, yeah, but we weren't but weren't... we weren't able to go to. Okay, the cast really of Flash, in... big deal. Ooh, oh, that would have been awesome. I I I didn't give a fuck. Cause I'm like <laughs> I'm not gonna meet these people personally. I don't care to hear. I don't care to hear set questions. You can stand answered in their grace, people. Lisa. <laughs> You can stand in my fucking grace, all right? I paid money, motherfucker. Stand in my grace. So, you got that. And then it was so, like... Background noise courtesy of Pacoima. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then there was just like stuff where I'm like, okay. Like, I missed the Darkwing Duck one because we yeah. were in traffic or yeah. something. I don't remember. I think, yeah, we were in traffic, we were in traffic. at the time. Traffic was ridiculous. Fuck traffic on. Oh, this. being a plus size cosplayer was one of the panels. I was like, come on, man. We all know what that shit's like. Like most people who, like at least fifty percent of the geek, the qualified geek community mm-hmm. is overweight. Like we all know what that's like. Which one is the Greek community? Yeah. Resources. That's oh, super specific. Okay, isn't it? that is really specific. So LGBT Greek community, community resources, resources panel. panel. So is that a panel to show for college kids? Could it for be for their college thing? You know what? That's what it is. It's like stuff is. I am tired of the world being modified for people who are in college because it's like there is a bigger world than that, mm-hmm. and there are more interests. But it seems like, like even when I was on Facebook and people keep sharing the. It's my culture, not a costume thing. There's mm-hmm. a joke one going around, and that one's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And I'm sensitive to issues and all this stuff. I have my own political things that I feel like. But I'm just like, people, it's gotten so annoying these days 
that I'm just like, I'd rather just quietly work towards my goals than to get online and fuss about them because there's so much whining from people who just want to seem like, at least, what is it called, uh, virtue signaling? Mm -hmm. There's so much whining and virtue signaling and all this stuff. I just, I can't, I can't deal with it because it's just like, for every time you share a post on Facebook, that's how many times you're not actually helping the problem. You're just... You're just digitally sharing information for people to see. You could argue see. that you're making that information more known. But and couldn't if, those people just fucking get out there and do something? Like, I don't know, if you if you have a problem with the way people are acting, all this stuff, influence people who are younger. Mm-hmm. Influence the youth. Mm-hmm. But instead, they're on Facebook sharing stuff to their personal circle about how uh, wearing a war bonnet is racist Mm. for halloween and i'm like "Eh, it could be considered racist but if you made your war bonnet out of like something else if you made it yourself it was Mm. your own thing you made is this still cultural appropriation and did you see something beautiful that you wanted to emulate Mm -hmm. and i mean i see that a lot with black people now this cultural appropriation thing has gotten out of hand because there's a lot of black people who get mad because they see somebody with braids and i'm like Every culture wears braids. Mm -hmm. They have mummies. They have bog mummies that have, there's evidence that they have braids. They're Celtic braiding hairstyles. They have mummies from South America. There's a mummy from South America. The the girl, I don't, they gave her like poison or, or a sleeping pill or something and she died perfectly preserved so she died her flesh was completely preserved Mm. and her hair is preserved and she has micro braids south america she had bone straight hair micro braids and it's gorgeous by the way and i'm like that's not cultural appropriation it's human it's it's just humans we just we do we do our hair like what the fuck yeah you know so and even with dreadlocks, I'm like, dreadlocks, it's not one culture thing. It's just that one culture you know preserved that hairstyle. So it's just this crazy idea that people have. So it's like, I can't wear feathers in my hair because Native Americans wear feathers. Mm-hmm. So if I wear feathers in any way, I'm appropriating a culture, even though I, in my imagination, said, I want turquoise and purple feathers in my hair or if if I was white and I wanted to braid my hair in cornrows because I saw Alicia Keys pictures from back in the day and her Mm. cornrows look really cool and I want that I'm appropriating culture but guess what Alicia Keys is half white so isn't she doing the same fucking shit isn't half of her appropriating half of her culture? <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it's stupid. It's, it's a, really it is fucking a, stupid. A stupid argument. And it's like, I, I get where it's coming from. It's like, okay, um, maybe don't dress up like a Native American you saw in a picture online and like walk, run around and do the ba 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 thing. Rachel on your Dolan's mouth. all over again. You know, that type of shit. The, there's extremes, though. Yeah, don't dress up like, don't dress up in a kimono. And run around saying ching chong bing bong like this fucked up. Right? Yeah. Remember when Stephen Colbert said it? Yeah. <laughs> that shit was funny because this chick, she missed the whole joke. Mm-hmm. And it was about how it's like the Redskins apology was like starting a charity for the ching chong ding dong society to help Asians or something like that. It was some crazy stuff and the girl all she heard was ching chong ding dong and just went off. Just lost her shit. Yeah, it's so dumb. It's just like you missed the whole skit because you're so busy looking for things to be mad about. So the whole point of this rant Mm -hmm. was people keep sharing that post and other posts about not wearing racist costumes for Halloween. And I'm like, just enjoy the goddamn holiday. Exactly. And share pictures of people doing the right thing without the tagline, we all knew who they were without blackface. Like, just show the picture. That's all you need. That's all you need. It's just a picture of the person and just be like, oh, what a good costume, period. Yeah. Just celebrate the good costumes and stop putting spotlights on people's foolishness 
Like, people keep sharing pictures, you know, images and quotes from Donald Trump and all this shit. And it's just like, how about you share some good shit from the candidate that you favor? Right. Rather than talking about this other person you don't like. And it was... So, the crazy shit I, like, got into before with the whole... 2012 doomsday people Mm -hmm. like listening to all these people talk one thing i took away from it that is valuable was if you if there's something negative that's bringing you down the worst thing you can do is keep putting spotlights on it and keep giving it energy so it's just like it's like a monster Mm -hmm. and it feeds the only way this monster gets stronger it's if you keep looking at it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, it'll die, but you don't look at it anymore. You mm-hmm. can't look at it anymore and it'll die. But every time you look at it, it gets stronger. You're feeding it with your attention. Mm-hmm. So it's, and then, so you can think about this, about the things that you want in your life. You want a better world, but you're looking at images of people in war and people protesting and some evil leader doing bad things to people. And this, you should be aware of these things. Mm-hmm. But if you're constantly ber- berating yourself and those around you with this thing, you're not helping change that because you're not putting spotlights on the positive things that are happening. Mm-hmm. So it's like the idea of like, oh, um, Africa is such a poor place. It's just like, yeah, there's some bad areas. And there's some bad things that happen there, but it's an entire fucking continent. And there's some cool shit happening there, too. Mm -hmm. And there are some awesome organizations that are doing great work there, too. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the Middle East. Same thing in China. But that type of stuff doesn't get spotlight because what's sexy and sensationally? Sensational tragedy. Mm -hmm. So it's that, that type of shit. And it's just like... It's like that tool song. Trying to remember the lyrics, but I'm too high oh, right now. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's a, there's a lot of songs about like, you know, basically looking for a positive, and it's not saying don't be aware of the bad things. It's not saying don't cry for people people when you see something tragic. But it's like you see something tragic or you see something bad in it, and it bothers you. Start finding out more about. The people in the area and all that stuff. Mm. Learn about its history. Don't just focus on that one moment and be like, oh, well, this is their life. Because, you know, it's like something I've noticed a lot. People, and they see these people and they're like, oh, they're in such bad conditions or they're having such a hard life. And I mean, the most personal one for me is police violence Mm -hmm. against black people. And you have white people who are, like, running around, putting a spotlight on it, and they're, like, speaking for us and everything. And it it's kind of annoying because it's this thing where it's just, like, I don't need you to come and talk to people about my problems for me. I need you to act as a witness mm-hmm. to my problems and to vote. In the favor of changing these problems. And, and encourage other people around you to do it. And exactly not be blind to it. Don't put blinders on when it's convenient to you. Mm-hmm. Speak up when it's time. But don't go and jump in front of people. And just like constantly be like, black people are oppressed. They know. Mm-hmm. They just don't care. You know, and it's just like because it doesn't affect them. It's not because they're bad people. Just because it doesn't affect them. Mm -hmm. If I was white and I had my life all made and I was happy, well, why the fuck would I be worried about what some poor black person is doing? You can also make the argument that. I mean, like, I'm black and I. If you're not even. It doesn't have to be white either. Like, if you're. I'm just saying, like, if you were privileged, if you were in a position of perceived privilege. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah, what I said. Yeah. If I was white and my life was made and I had it easy, and I had it pretty easy going. Mm-hmm. Why would I be concerned about that mm-hmm. issue to the point where it's constantly in the forefront of my mind? Mm. 
I would be aware of the issue. Like if I just flipped who I was and now I'm from this other background because I'm pretty level, I feel like I would still be aware of it. Like I'm aware of other people's issues Mm -hmm. now, but it would just be the thing of like, it doesn't concern me personally to constantly be thinking about police brutality Mm -hmm. before 2014. You know, Mm -hmm. like, I don't think it would, I don't think it's something that just lives in the consciousness of your average white person who's just walking around living a middle class life. You know, people with actual, like, buying power and actual, you know, people who have buying power because they live middle class or up and then they have influence if they have financial influence. Like, those people aren't thinking about people like the people that live in inner city ghettos Mm -hmm. because it's not that's not their life that's not their existence so it's the thing of like okay if you're a white person or a person of privilege in general who is around people who have the buying power who have the influence it's not your job to go around trying to tell keisha williams story or lisa thompson's story Mm -hmm. or jermaine's story or trayvon's story Mm -hmm. It's your job to influence the people around you to make sure that Trayvon's story doesn't happen again. Mm-hmm. Not parade them with the story, but stop the, the, the machine that keeps these type of stories happening and to educate your community about treating people who look different than you mm-hmm. as equal. And giving them a chance and actually investing in people who may, you know, it's, I, th- I think it's the thing of like, everybody wants to take care of people. It's natural. It's human nature. You want to look out for people who look like you. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard not to do it. But it's like, you, you see there's a dude who has applied for your job three times. Mm. for your company and you look at his resume and you look at his name he got a weird name like maybe hire him Mm -hmm. don't just look him over because he got a weird name see what he's about and if he doesn't have the credentials bypass him yeah but if you're bypassing him for any reason other than him not having the credentials check yourself yeah that's all and it's like in get people around you to do the same thing it's like level the playing field and then if you see the situation where you see you're you're working in a law office or whatever it is or you're working in a on a court trial or you're a police officer or whatever it is and the profiling thing comes up be that person to not fucking profile somebody off of a stereotype that someone taught you Mm -hmm. or that your job taught you because it's just like remember your job is to do is to tell people to do shit they don't want to do your job is to be the fucking safety patrol nobody fucking likes the safety patrol Mm -hmm. so how about check yourself and not fucking do that Mm -hmm. just because you see the brown guy (laughs) don't treat him like a criminal treat him like a person right that's all that note (laughs) drop that that truth bomb we're gonna end the. Uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're gonna end that. Our show for tonight. Um, this was uh, another great episode. Uh, this is basically our anniversary episode. If you want to. Kinda yeah. Yeah, this is um, third year doing this. Oh. Here and there, um, <laughs> we're gonna keep trying to do at least once a week, just a even if it's an audio one. Work it out. Um, we're gonna I think do, we do I wanna do a video a I wanna do a video one soon. Um for sure. But yeah, um that's a great idea. Until next time, this is Rick. And this is Lisa. Saying do what you want and be happy. See you guys later. Bye.